Hey there guys, it's Stealth Fortniter here with the first episode of my Minecraft Bucket Server tutorial series. And I'm going to start with showing you how to set up the Bucket Server, and then next episode will be all about the configuration files, and after that, you can request different plugins and different aspects of Bucket that you would like me to do a tutorial on. So the first thing you want to do is go into your web browser and go to dl.bucket.org, which is linked in the description, and you want to click the alternate versions link. This will bring you to a page that has a whole bunch of different downloads. We're only going to deal with these latest downloads right here in this box. And for the sake of this tutorial, I will be downloading the development build, but as you increase you get less bugs, so uh, the beta build is less buggy than the development build, and the recommended build is much less buggy than the beta build. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to download the development build, and you want to download a build that is compatible with the version of Minecraft you'd like to run the server for. So click the link there, and save it on your desktop. And you want to go to your desktop, and you want to create a new folder, and save it as a bucket server or bucket or just server and you want to drag in the craft bucket dot jar into that folder and also in the description is a link to this run.bat file which will have the run script and you want to drag that into the bucket server folder as well now open up the bucket server folder and you want to right click the craft bucket jar and click rename and remove all of the numbers from the end so it just says craft bucket. Now right click your run.bat and click edit and you can see there's a little bit of information so this just initializes Java in the command prompt. This is the amount of RAM your server runs on and you can find the amount of RAM your computer has by going to start, right click computer and click properties and then once you have that, you'll be able to see the amount of RAM that you have in your computer. And I would leave at least two gigabytes or three gigabytes of RAM open. And also don't overload the server. You don't need that much RAM for uh, a lot of players. You can probably use about a gigabyte for 20 players or so, maybe a little bit less. Uh, so yes, you want to use the correct amount here. And I will leave a link to a gigabyte to megabyte converter in the description so you can convert the gigabytes to megabytes. Now if you want some tips on how much RAM you should use, let me know how many players you want to be able to join the server, and also how much RAM your computer has. Next is the craftbucket.jar, and you can see that that matches our file here, and it just has the .jar extension, which this is an executable jar file. If you would like to keep the name of this file the same, you would have to paste the name right where it says craft bucket so you have all of the extra information there. Now you can close the run.bat file and you can double click run and it will open a command prompt window. It might take a few seconds to start up at the first time because it has to generate all the files. You also might get some errors because it does not have the files that it needs until it generates at least once. Now you can see that a whole bunch of different files generated and I'm going to go over these in detail next episode, but just quickly, you have your logs folder, your plugins folder, which was where you will put all of the plugins, the world files, the band players, band IPs files, all of the configuration files here, and the jar, and you have the ops file, and of course the server.properties, the user cache, and the whitelist. All of these things I will go into detail with next episode, uh, but for right now, we're just going to open up Minecraft and just make sure our server works correctly. Now make sure you are using the correct version of Minecraft for whichever version your server is running. And then we're going to connect. And you can see that I'm connecting to localhost. So just go ahead and connect to localhost and you should be able to connect to your server. As you can see, I have my information here and this is basically just a regular Minecraft world, nothing too different about it, uh, but I assure you that once we start adding plugins and all the configuration, uh, we will be seeing some changes in the world. Alright, so now that we see that it works, you can go ahead into your command prompt and just type stop and this will close the server and you might need to hit another key to close the command prompt window. 
and then you can quit Minecraft. Now that is the end of this episode of my Minecraft Bucket Server tutorial series. If you did find this helpful, a like and a favorite would be greatly appreciated. Also, make sure to share it with your friends so they can learn how to make a bucket server as well. If you're not already, make sure you follow me on Twitter, like the Facebook fan page, and follow me on Google+. And if you're new to the channel and you do enjoy gaming, tutorials, and reviews, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.